Um, for this demonstration, I'm going to show you how to render club chairs from various points of view um, with the light source coming from the side windows, which is what it's going to be like in your living room renderings. Um, for these two, I'm going to render them in blue. And then for this last one, I'm going to show you how to render it if you wanted it to be white or some kind of light color like that. Okay, so we're taking into consideration our light source. So we have to make it uniform across all three of these chairs, right? So the first thing I'm going to do is circle the places where I know the highlights are gonna be so that I remember to leave them alone. And it's important that you leave them white for a while. We'll go back in and color them, but um, truthfully, it's very difficult even with a white pencil or a um, gel pen to come back to white. Okay, so once I have the spots that I wanna leave alone, that I don't want to um, touch yet, I'm gonna take my middle blue, um, whichever one you're using. I know a lot of you have different kinds of markers. And I'm gonna go very bravely into all of the spots where um, surfaces meet other surfaces where light is not, not really likely to get. Um, so I have my, my darkest part started. Not a lot of light's going to reach the front. And then I'm going to make sure I'm not just finishing one, but I'm actually moving around my drawing so that I can give time for things to dry when I go to add another layer. Um, remember that where you put your marker down the first time, right where you set it, that's where the most um, ink is going to um, drop onto your um, paper. So you want to be aware of that and you know it, it helps to start in corners or edges and kind of fan out to um, the middle. All right. Now that I have um, my, my middle blue, I'm going to go in with my light blue and I'm going to um, color in all the spots that are next to my white. So I still wanna leave those blank, but I just wanna get um, the composition where it it looks more like it's going to look when it's fully rendered. I might go in with just a feather into the white spot. Next thing I'm going to do, just to let that dry a little bit, is to deal with the legs. And so I'm going to go in with my light brown and I'm going to fill in the legs. Okay, time to be real brave. I'm gonna take my dark blue and I'm gonna go back in um, at the very dark places of my chair where no light is gonna hit at all. That's likely gonna be this side. I might not fill that whole thing in because some light can kind of creep around there. Um, here, 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 that whole thing. If you have the block markers, they can work just fine too. You may want to give yourself an outline with the um, small tip. 
in order to guide where you put your marker down first. dry a bit and I'm gonna go in with my dark brown and this is where you're gonna have to be pretty brave <laughs> I know you guys love to go in dark like this all right so because the lights coming in here um, one side of my leg is gonna be darker than the other side the other side will get a little bit of light Okay, now for the cast shadow. Um, light's coming in this way, so you wanna think about um, where the shadow will come from your chair. And this, when you're doing it in your living room, um, will be about what color your floors are. So um, let's say I had a dark brown floor. This is my even darker shadow. And we'll do the same over here. Okay. I'm going to let that be for a while. And now I'm going to go in with um, my lightest blue and I'm going to color in all the places that I left white Now I want to take my medium blue and I want to um, go back in where the dark, not where the darkest parts are, but I do want to go over the darkest parts again and just give myself the middle range between the darkest and the lightest highlights. And you can always use um, the uh, blending the middle one as a blending marker between the, the um, dark and the light or the light one also can be used as a blending marker. So I would go in here and to blend that dark into the lightest part. I would go in here around the highlights. Now that's the order I like to do things because I like to go back and forth between lights and darks. But you you know you could find your own way around this. Like if it if there's another way that seems to work better for you, um, I would say you know find that. But um, Okay, so now I'm going to take my colorless blender. And we haven't talked much about this. The colorless blender can't really blend, like you can't mix a red and a yellow and get orange. What it kind of acts like is an eraser to sort of blur edges between various shades of similar colors. Um, it also adds more um, solution to it, so you can get a little bit of a more blurry watercolor effect. The other thing the colorless blender is good for is when you're trying to render something um, very light and you don't have the marker for it, you can use a layer of colorless blender and then go in with colored pencils. So what I'm gonna do with this is I'm just gonna find all the places where um, I have kind of choppy edges and I'm going to use the colorless blender to sort of smooth those things out. Yeah, 
it takes a minute for the solution to kind of blend it out totally and you won't get rid of all of those lines if you don't like those kind of brushy lines you can also always go back in with your marker again and um, just add more into those spaces if you want to tidy that up in that way I kind of like a more loose um, interpretation I might also come in and blend the legs out a little bit and blend the shadow out a little bit So the important thing is that you're remembering to know where your light source is um, every step of the way on these. So um, I would be probably done with my marker work here. And what I would do now is probably go in with um, colored pencils and tighten up some of the lines and the details. So um, I'm gonna start with my blue pencil and I'm just gonna give these seams a little bit of a punch up because um, that way you, you feel like you're getting a little more detail. Also, you could take a straight edge here if you want, because you notice how my line, like I, my pen leaks a little bit down here. You can tighten it up that way if you want. I'm not going to right now, but I know some of you are a lot tidier than I am. So we just want to have some crispness, um, some, uh, you know, tightening of the form, you know what that is. Okay, so then I'm probably gonna take my black pencil and I'm just gonna give myself a little more definition on the dark side of the legs and the bottom so that you can differentiate between the leg and the shadow. Maybe it comes out a little bit like that. Um, you can also use black to go back into your chair if you want to. The last thing I'm going to do is take my white pencil and I'm just going to go in and smudge around on the, um, the brightest highlights. Remember, when you're working with your colored pencils, keep them sharp because they will build up um, what's called burnishing. It's a um, like the, the the, it gets rubbed so hard that that pencil won't come off anymore. I forgot one last detail. I know these chairs have little details on here. Um, so I might do something like that. So that's the blue chairs and I think they look pretty good. Now let me show you what I'm gonna do to um, render this chair in white. So in order to show white, we don't just leave it blank. We don't do that on the walls, we don't do that on the furniture. What we have to do to show white is to show um, gray in all the darkest parts. Sorry about that. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go very boldly with my 50% gray. And I'm gonna go into all of the darkest seams again, like I did with the dark blue and the bottom parts where not a lot of light is gonna hit. Now, this is what I'm gonna do with the gray, but I'm gonna take my colorless blender and I'm gonna go over the whole thing. So I want to start here. I'm basically just giving it a layer of solution from the marker so that it's not just the um, bare paper. I'm going to give that a second to um, dry a little bit. Then I'm going to take my black pencil and I'm going to give a little definition at the seams. Now you don't want to come in 
and outline everything the same. Remember how I kind of caution you to not give yourself a full, heavy, um, one weighted contour line everywhere. But we want to give a little definition. So I'll go on the dark side of the chair legs. Okay. And then, very simply, I'm going to take my white pencil and on the the light parts, I'm just going to give myself a layer of white. And that's it. Um, we'll do more tutorials, but um, I hope that this was enjoyable and I will look forward to giving you another one. All right. Bye.